I've really come around to more artistic, capital F fashion from more experimental fashion houses over the past year or so. It seems like it's a really tough thing for a lot of people to get into, but having an open mind and following some really, really great and talented content creators, and not to mention already having a love for all things fashion, I'm starting to view this type of design through the artistic lens that it really deserves. And by doing so, I'm getting a lot more out of it. So I kind of wanted to take this newfound perspective and do a little bit of an artistic exercise for myself and do a book analysis. One that will serve as an introduction of sorts to one of the most prolific designer-photographer collaborations of the 20th century. The book is Issei Miyake, Photographs by Irving Penn. It's a collection of 46 photographs done by Penn of Miyake's women's designs from collections throughout the 1980s. The book was printed to coincide with an art exhibition shown at a Paris museum, which I will put up on the screen and not even attempt to butcher the name of. It's a collection that encapsulates the working relationship between two extremely talented people in a really beautiful way. So real quick for the uninitiated, who was Issei Miyake and who was Irving Penn. Issei Miyake was a Japanese fashion designer. He started his career in 1964 with a collection named A Poem of Cloth and Stone. And up until his official retirement in 1997, he was crafting beautiful wearable sculptures, clothing that expanded the boundaries of what was originally thought possible. And he used a lot of very interesting and unexpected materials, like synthetic resins or fiber-reinforced plastics. He really was one of the first established fashion designers in Japan, especially in the way that we think of what a fashion designer is. Penn had an equally as influential career in his respective art form. And after doing some photographic work out of school, Penn went to work for Vogue magazine. And his time at Vogue would prove to be the sort of catalyst that propelled him into the photography world. At the time, he was working as a part of their design team, but he always had very consistent visions for how he wanted spreads to come out. They were so well thought out that the design team at Vogue suggested to Penn that he just do the photography himself. So they set him up with a studio and the rest is history. What he learned there led him to eventually become one of the most influential fashion and still life photographers of the 20th century. If you are new to Miyake or Irving Penn's work in any way, I highly recommend that you go check out some of their stuff to give yourself a bit of a frame of reference, but also because their work is incredible. They were masters of their respective crafts. Their 13-year artistic collaboration began in 1987 and went until 1999, which was just after Miyake's official retirement from design. In 1987, Issei Miyake commissioned Penn to photograph some of his clothing, and he was blown away by the results. He saw the photos that Irving Penn took, and it was as if he was viewing his designs again for the first time. In a way, the crossover between their work could not have been more perfect. It's almost as if the Venn diagram is a perfect circle. Both Miyake and Penn were unique in that they both danced around this line of what it meant to be a professional artist at the time. It really wasn't often that the fine art space and the commercial art space interacted so seamlessly. But both Penn and Miyake did so in their own ways. Penn was a still life photographer that also did fashion photography. And Miyake was a sculptor of cloth, but he was also the head of a commercial fashion house. I think these unique parallels is why Penn was able to capture Miyake's work in such a special way. And the really interesting thing about these shoots is that there was no direction between Miyake and Penn. They never actually met for the shoots or during the shoots. Miyake would send Irving Penn the clothes, Irving Penn would take the photographs, and he would send everything back to Miyake. And that was it. There was no direct influence from Miyake to Penn or Penn to Miyake. So for this next part, just want to make it perfectly clear. 
I'm doing a little bit of my own personal analysis here. A lot of this stuff is my opinion. I'm just one person that has one thing to say. You may view the images in the book uh, and the collaboration between Miyake and Penn in a totally different light. Considering Miyake and Penn's respective viewpoints, I really think what's being photographed here is living sculpture. The designs, the clothing, it wasn't complete unless a human was wearing it. And it brought life to the still life that was the clothing. Oftentimes, Penn would include human elements into his still life photography. And I think he recognized that when he was photographing Miyake's work, he was photographing living still lifes. Like much of his other work, Penn chooses to photograph these designs in front of a blank white wall, which is something that he did a lot. A lot of times he would put models in front of corners or very simple, very discreet backgrounds. And I think here especially, he wants you to view the clothes and the posing free of distraction. He's letting them speak for themselves. It should also be noted that he uses the same model for every look in the shoot. I'm not exactly sure of the significance of that or the purpose or intent behind it, but it's worth noting. There's a great quote on page 12 that I think sets some of the tone for how we view Miyake's designs. Dialogue for me is more important than understanding. I don't always expect to be understood. People have understood enough, a little bit enough. Sometimes I don't even understand what I've done. How can I expect anybody else to? The whole presentation of the book is about this dialogue. The dialogue between the model and the clothes, the dialogue between the clothing and the photographs, the dialogue between Penn and Miyake, and finally, the dialogue between us, the viewer, and the contents of the book. I think another piece of a quote here on page 22 presents us with an interesting thing to think about when viewing this. Miyake simply says, when I see clothing worn, our communication is complete. I think that presents us with a bit of an ending when it comes to the dialogue between us, the viewer, and Miyake's designs, but it also presents us with a unique crossroads. On one hand, by Penn photographing Miyake's design and by someone wearing the designs, the conversation there is complete. And although that conversation may be ending, the conversation between us, the viewers, and the contents of the book, and all of Miyake's designs and Penn's photographs of them, is forever ongoing. It's constantly being shaped by different viewpoints with no sort of finite ending. Part of the beauty in Miyake's design philosophy was that things didn't necessarily have to make sense. But that doesn't mean that we or Irving Penn couldn't find meaning in them. In a comment about the collaboration, Miyake once said of Penn, I was looking for the one person who could look at my clothing, hear my voice, and answer me back through his own creation. I searched long for such a person and found that in Penn-san. This back and forth is what is on showcase here in this book. And I think the real meaning that's meant to be found here is an attempt at understanding each other. We're trying to accept the things that we see for what they are and find some common emotional ground or some sympathy. And not just between Penn and Miyake, but, but us as viewers to the rest of the world. I think Penn does a really wonderful job in his posing, showing very interesting lines and distortions and curves. He's showing this uniqueness that the designs have. And I think he's trying to remind us that, like Miyake's designs, not everything has to be so linear, so easily understood, and so cut and dry. At some point, people need to have these feelings of mutual sympathy to understand the things that are tough to understand. There's one more quote on page 23 that I think sums things up nicely. It's irritating in a way when someone comes up to me and says a design was very understandable. That means it's not good enough, that it's not challenging enough. I don't want to do decoration. I believe in questioning. When I work in my studio sometimes, I feel like a nursery school teacher. I want to fight with these kids, and I want them to fight me back. Miyake had this quest for this deep conversation, one that really digs into his own and the viewer's psyche, and it has this end result of this mutual sympathy. 
And I think he found the perfect conversation partner in Irving Penn. I really can't stress enough how wonderful both of their works are. Um, it's really something special. And I hope you found this to be a good jumping off point to more of what they do and what they have to offer. But that's it for this one. Um, thank you so much for watching. I, I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time.